The McLennan Report, Acts or Ask, Donda's Rules, Suit Shoes, all available at mclendonreport.com. Why are we killing each other? Is the shedding of human blood just commonplace now? For weeks on Gerard McClendon Live, I have expressed outrage at the number of homicides that have been the plague of a specific Chicago community. You have been crying out as well in the form of calls and e emails. This evening, we get to see the streets firsthand with CLTV reporter Gaynor Hall and ceasefire activist T.O. Hardiman. To find the answers to violence, we ask the hard questions tonight on Gerard McClendon Live. Welcome to a special edition of Gerard McClendon Live. We've prayed, mourned, cried, and protested, but is there really an answer to stopping the violence? The tragedies transpiring in the Inglewood community have depressed our hopes, leaving us with few answers. T.O. Hardiman from Ceasefire will join us later, but CLTV reporter Gaynor Hall joins me on set to discuss deadly lessons. Gaynor, Tell us why you produced this series and, you know, lead us into this program. Mm -hmm. You know, Gerard, in covering uh, these crime stories, we hear so much from the victims and their families, from the community activists who are trying to stop the violence, mm -hmm. but we rarely hear from the young people who are caught up in the street life, mm -hmm. the young people who could potentially be out there committing these crimes. And so what we wanted to do was spend a night in Inglewood talking to two young men who were trying and struggling to turn their lives around. Yes. This is real out here. I mean, from gang banging to selling drugs to fighting. For many kids caught up in street life, it's a real struggle to get out. What can you do? We'll try to adapt and hope you don't get killed. I'm stuck. You know what I'm saying? It seems like I ain't got no, I ain't got nobody to pull me up for Monday. You know, I'm trapped. This young man is known around Inglewood as BM. At 12 years old, he was in a gang, kicked out of two high schools. He got his education on the street. I've been shot. I just shot at, stole on, had my head cracked. Everything I didn't did, I just, somebody didn't did to me. The story is similar for Harrison Jones. His choice, go to school or sell drugs. He chose the easy money. I say, man, it's easy to make $200 this easy within 30 minutes, you know? And then me being 14, 15, $200 was a lot of money back then. Street hustling kept Harrison in and out of jail. But about five years ago, he says he had a personal breakthrough. I, I realized that I didn't want, I, that ain't where I wanted to be. And he hasn't been back since. He stopped selling drugs and he's working on getting his GED. That's exactly what BM wants to do. I'm going to try not to backslide. But BM lives in the same house he always has. And every day he has to face the same people he used to break the law with. They haven't changed. That makes it even harder for him to. Some of us, that's all we know. That's all we know. Like we sitting here now. You bound to hear some gunshots. Somebody bound, you know, to, to literally come up in and start shooting them. During the day, the block is quiet, almost peaceful. But what the sunlight reveals are the boarded up homes in this neighborhood and the poverty that is in so many ways tied to the violence. These young people are symptom bearers of communities in many cases that are toxic because of failing schools, because of lack of opportunities, because of hopelessness. Dr. Dexter Voisin, a professor at the University of Chicago, says ending the senseless violence has to start with changing the look of struggling neighborhoods like Inglewood. We call them risky kids. In, in actuality, they're living in a risky environment. Give us something to do. Give us, get, motivate us. Give us something to, to want to do something besides hang on the, hang on the streets. If you go on the north side, of, the, the north side of the city, you, you, don't, you, you don't see these type of things like this. You know, you, you see things, they're always building for, for, for the people that's in the neighborhood. You know, they, they give them something to do. Unfortunately, in the ghetto, we don't have them type of things. And it's just the way it is out here. I mean, and that's a shame the way, it, you know, the way it got to be. For BM, moving out of Inglewood is not an option, but he's learning to maneuver through it with some help from the group Ceasefire. A lot of these guys be wanting to change. They be looking for a way out to do the right thing. Ricardo Williams transformed his own life, but helping BM do the same is a day-to-day -day struggle. It's easy to go. 
right back to what I was doing. Just standing on the corner, chilling with a group of guys. Getting high, drinking. If he goes back to the corner, though, there's a lot at stake. Like most of the young men in this community, both BM and Harrison are under constant surveillance, not just by police or on this day by our news camera, but by the next generation of Inglewood residents. I want to see the kids live a life, you know, have a life to live. Because they can so easily fall into the violent cycle that must be broken. If they see you doing good, then they probably can't do it. But if good means bad in the hood, in the streets, they're going to follow suit. Mm, that's CLT re re reporter Gaynor Hall and Deadly Lessons. You know, Gaynor, what did you observe specifically? I, I, the young man said, that's all we know. I mean, what does that mean to you as a reporter? I mean, with him saying that. You know, Gerard, it's like I was struck when I when I went there. We spent several hours at <laughs> night, and it was like a completely, it was a different world. Uh, one of the things that struck me was we were standing on the corner, and, you know, I'm talking to people mm. about their experiences, and a bunch of people standing out, 66th and Bishop. Every time a car drives by, everyone mm. stops what they're doing, and they follow with their eyes mm. the car that's driving down the street. I asked one of the guys, I said, well, you know, why, why are you all doing that? And he's like, because you don't know if the person in that car is coming to kill you. Yeah, yeah. It's like gunshots have become commonplace. And when a car is driving kind of slow, the windows may roll down and someone just may, un, you know, open fire. You know, and that's frustrating, Gaynor, to live in a community that you call home and you have quotes from these young men saying that that's all I know and you know it's violent out here and and as the young man also mentioned Gaynor there's development occurring in other communities but not here how did that strike you yeah there is you know what it's amazing to think that just 10 minutes away from Inglewood <laughs> is the neighborhood where our future president lives wow. and <laughs> If you, if you heard from the interview that I did with a professor from University of Chicago, he says these are toxic communities, toxic. Mm. And our young people are growing up yes. in toxic communities. It's something to think about. You know, we have so much more for you in this special edition of Gerard McClendon Live. Still ahead, why do people resort to violence? Coming up next, more with Gaynor Hall, and we'll meet a Chicago organization trying to bring peace with a hands-on approach. To comment on Deadly Lessons, visit my blog, cltv.com slash gml, and share your thoughts on stopping the violence in our streets. T.O. Hardiman joins us next. Stay right there. We'll be back in two. What's happening in Inglewood is poverty. No jobs, a lack of hope, as well as broken homes. When people are pinned in corners, what do you expect? That's a blogger, Alice. You know, that's one of the comments left on Gaynor's Deadly Lessons blog. You can leave your comments as well. Just visit the news blog section on CLTV.com. Welcome back to a special edition of Gerard McClendon Live. CLTV reporter Gaynor Hall joins me as we discuss deadly lessons. And joining us from Studio C is a true soldier and activist from Ceasefire, T.O. Hardiman. T.O., thanks for joining us on Gerard McClendon Live. Thank you, Gerard. You know, T.O., you are truly a soldier. You're out there in the streets. You're not just lip service. Talk to me, T.O. What does Ceasefire do to try to curtail these crimes and these murders? Well, first of all, Ceasefire is a public health approach which was designed uh, to actually address the behavior and change the mindset of people that interact and engage in violence, you know, in the acts of violence in the communities in which we work in. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, see, right now, Gerard, 70% of the violence that takes place in Chicago is interpersonal violence. The other 30% may be gang-related. Related. Then you have a little bit of domestic violence in there. Okay, 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 T.T.O., interpersonal violence. Right. Talk to me, man. Break this down for my audience. Yeah, interpersonal violence means a guy might get into it with another guy over something petty to us, but to the guys on the block, it's something that's real serious. Okay, so if he mean mugs you, uh, he may, yes. you know, uh, give you a bad look. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he may try to holler at, 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 his, at his girlfriend or something. Is that a situation that could be con considered interpersonal? Yeah, that's interpersonal for sure because, see, 70 percent of the young men are on the defense as well here in the city of Chicago. So in order to reduce the violence, you have to reduce tensions in the overall community. Yeah. So, you know, jobs do play a role. Uh, behavioral change plays a role because, see, violence is handed down behavior. It's taught behavior. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yes. You know, T.O., okay, it's handed down behavior, and I want to go back to Gaynor on this. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the backgrounds of these young men because as I'm watching the piece, I am bleeding. My heart's bleeding. Yes. I feel for them. I mean, they are me. You know, but I want to go to Gaynor. Gaynor, what were the what are the backgrounds of these mm -hmm. individuals? Well, you know, both of those guys we talked to in that piece dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. One of them uh, kicked out of two schools. Uh, BM, who was uh, who was the major focus of the piece. Mm -hmm. You know, he said he just didn't feel like school was for him. Yeah. He knew that he was going to be in a gang from 12 years old. He had access to guns in his home from when he was a child. He said, right. I said, when did you get your first gun? Guns were always around, wow. is what he says. He always loved guns, so 12 years old, you join a gang, you pick up a gun, yeah. you hit the corner, it's, you know, it it's, just... It's, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. You know, and it becomes perpetual, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, T.O., backgrounds, man, I mean, you know, I know your organization deals with young adults and adults. Is there anything Ceasefire is looking at that pertains to much younger people? I mean, Gaynor mentions young men who had access to guns at a very early age. Well, last year, out of the 443 people that were slain here in Chicago, 331 of them were African-American youth. And the age range was like from 15 to 24 years old. Mm. So we work with the guys within that age range. The younger uh, kids, they need to be working with as well. However, there are other programs out there that work with the younger people. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. You know, T.O., is it just in, and we'll talk about economics a little bit later, but yes. is, it, is it just economy that makes a person uh, sling dope on the corner? Or is it more of an, an environmental approach? I mean, do you just grow up with it and then that's what I do? No, no, not at all. See, the dope game has dried up a lot here in Chicago. I must admit that. And I do want to applaud the governor just for a second. He actually created 10,000 jobs for the youth during the summer here in 2008, but the violence still went up and the shootings went up. That goes to the point that we have to change the mindset, change the behavior, change the thinking. Because th think about it. Jennifer Hudson's, uh, the, her brother, mother, and nephew was killed. That was already on the mind of the person that killed her family members mm. way before that person acted out on, in that act of violence. Yeah. The young man that shot the girl on the bus had a gun with him and he wanted to shoot somebody. Yeah, you hold up to you. I think uh, I think Gainer's got something. Yeah, here. I just want to say, and Tio <laughs> makes a really good point because, you know, uh, I asked this question to the guys that I talked to. Is there a consciousness? Is there a consciousness? Do you think about the fact that if you pick up a gun and you shoot, into a crowd of people, someone who is innocent might get hit. Wow. I asked that question, and they said they're so blinded by their anger over things that, as T.O. pointed out, is often very petty, very yeah. petty interpersonal conflicts, yeah. so blinded by the anger over that, uh, the broken rules and this uh, unwritten code of conduct <laughs> that they have right. on the street, that they pick up the guns and start shooting. But it is so important to note that all of these kids in this neighborhood are not bad kids. That's right. That's right, right Gaynor. You know, blinded by anger, still to come when people People have limited choices. How can we dismantle the culture of violence? For more information on a safe community, go to www.ceasefirechicago.org. Gainer Hall and T.O. Hardiman advance the discussion on a special edition of Gerard McClendon Live. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. I have innocent victims, limited choices, gun violence. Gainer Hall and T.O. Hardiman join me tonight to find a way to keep precious human beings alive. You know, Gainer, let's go right back to the consciousness, because when you talked about being blinded and clouded by anger, that frustrates me. I mean, I understand it, but it also frustrates me. And T.O., I want you to jump in as well, T.O., but Gainer, you know, blinded by anger. I mean, Gainer, if I'm angry, I might, you know, put my hand on the desk, I may go for a drive, but what makes you pop somebody? I don't know. I really <laughs> don't know. And I think that that's why, uh, from what I observe, the work that we saw uh, at Ceasefire, that Ceasefire is doing, mm -hmm. is so important because they're helping these young people learn 
conflict resolution. Mm. They don't understand that if you have, some of them don't understand that if you have a disagreement with someone, mm. uh, I, you know, my w car window was busted out. Yeah that that doesn't mean that you need to pick up a gun yeah. and kill somebody right. for that. And that is, a, that's, and that's what the ceasefire violence interrupters are doing. Yeah, T.O., do, right. when young men go to the, the funerals, man, let's talk about the funeral. And I know your work tries to alleviate that. Right. But do they recognize and realize the magnitude of someone laying in a casket? Oh, not necessarily. A lot of people have been desensitized towards the suffering of other people, mm -hmm. and it's just a code of the streets. Now, the thing is, we have to change that behavior as well, and we have to really get through to these guys. As a matter of fact, from January of this year to the end of September, ceasefire violence interrupters and outreach workers have mediated 143 conflicts that could have led to a homicide or a shooting. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, stopping one person at a time, and then getting that person the help, that person the help they need to get to the next level. Okay, T.O., I gotta bust your chops <laughs> now, man, and, and I hope Gaynor can back you up because okay. how can you interrupt violence, man? Come yes. on, can you? Is that qualitative or yes. is that quantitative? Come on, T.O. Let me break you, it down. You gotta, uh, the reason yeah. why I'm talking over you right now right. is because, T.O., as much as I love you, brother, yes, I don't <laughs> believe you, T.O. How do you stop someone well, and how can you quantify that? First of all, you have to be able to intercept whispers on the streets. You mm. have to have credible messengers that know the guys, they can get through to the guys when most people cannot get through to them, number one. Number two, the Department of Justice did an evaluation on ceasefire, and it was proven, scientifically proven, that it's evidence-based now that we can cool down hot spots and interrupt violence because we have testimonials. See, nobody can get past the testimonials of guys that we've interrupted with. Yeah. And, and you know what I observed, uh, uh, Gerard, uh, from being out there, is that these, uh, young, these young people who are violence interrupters, they have street credibility. Right. They are known in the hood. They mm. are there all the time walking around, developing contacts, building relationships yeah. so yeah. that when something does happen, someone will pick up the phone and call them. It, 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 it does seem incredulous, but yeah. it seems, yeah. uh, from, from at least what I saw, it seems to be working. Yeah, and you know, you know, Gaynor and T.O., we can't always blame the Chicago Police Department, and right. that's what happens all the time. You know what, you guys hold on tight, man. The show goes so fast. Yeah. Stay with Gerard <laughs> McClendon live as okay. we discuss CLTV reporter Gaynor Hall's work in the Inglewood community. T.O. Hardiman from Ceasefire gives us solutions. www.cltv.com slash GML to comment on deadly lessons. More Gerard McClendon live, two minutes. Welcome back to a special edition of Gerard McClendon Live. CLTV reporter Gaynor Hall and Ceasefire Chicago's T.O. Hardiman give us insight on the tragedies and remedies for a community in pain. With violence running rampant and an ailing economy, what do we do now? T.O., can we really curtail anger when even money making the honest way becomes limited. I mean, it's, we're in a depressed economy. Aren't things going to get worse? Are we going to see an increase in T.O. Hardiman's ceasefire trying to intervene? There's definitely a possibility. You know, we just uh, got word that we may be getting our state funding back. So therefore, we can intensify our efforts here in Chicagoland and get the homicides back down again. Because when we had our full team working, uh, Chicago experienced a 25% reduction in homicides. But we have, no matter whether a person is working or not, the whole community here, especially in the inner city, everybody's on the defense. Yeah. So we have to reduce tensions within the community, make people feel safe. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. You know, T.O., I'm going to go to Gainer. Gainer, when it comes to just the average, everyday, work-a-day citizen in Englewood or any other community that's suffering from this, you know, what are they saying about how to stop this violence? Yeah, the, uh, that was a question that I posed to the young man that I talked to. And I think long-term, it's definitely education. Mm -hmm. It's education. Um, 
both of the men dropped out of school at a very young age. Uh, one guy, Harrison Jones, he said, hey, you know, <laughs> if, if there had been more teachers be, uh, being able to give specific attention to me, mm. you know, if I had gotten more attention in school, maybe I wouldn't have dropped out. If there were more activities, maybe, you know, there would be more things for me to do to keep me away from street life. Yeah. They want to see more things in the community, more gyms, yeah. so the kids can go play basketball, so they can go swimming. They don't have to go all the way across the city to do that. Mm. Those are things that are considered luxuries right. in Inglewood. Right. You know, T.O., let's talk about those luxuries, man, that should be items that should be there anyway. I, you know, growing up as a child, I was always exposed to Pop Warner football. I played Little League baseball. You right. know, I used to build uh, model railroading train sets and shooting uh, rockets with my dad. I mean, you know, is there a way we can infuse more activities into the Inglewood community for children at a much younger age? Well, see, first of all, we need the Iraqi plan here in Chicago and across oh. the United States. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 stop. Say right. that again. We need the Iraqi plan here in Chicago oh, to well, rebuild what? these inner cities yeah. and put people to work. You know, so they can reduce some of the levels of attention, even though the jobs don't work for everybody because some people have to get to a level where they're ready to work. Okay? Yeah. Now, recreations do play a role. You know, recreational opportunities like basketball, swimming, but the mo for the most part, dysfunctional families and fatherless families, yeah. they play a role as well. We have a lot of communities that are really uh, crime-ridden because mm. the men are not standing up. Yeah. The yeah. men are overlooking the acts of violence. You know, and, and on a fu future show, man, I want to talk about standing up more. Yes. Gainer, we are running real light. Final comment, Gainer. Final comment, you know, it is a dire situation. Mm -hmm. It is a dire situation in the African American community in 2007. 75% of the murder victims are black. Something yeah, right. has to be done. People need to wake up. Yeah. They cannot be indifferent to the yeah. violence that is continuing in our community. Wow. You know, we thank you for watching a special edition of Gerard McClendon Live. We want to congratulate Ceasefire's efforts. Ceasefire's Tito Hardeman deserves your support. So please contribute to the cause of conflict mediation. Talking someone down is truly heroic, and we commend the efforts of Mr. Hardeman's organization. Thanks to CLTV reporter Gaynor Hall for producing Deadly Lessons, bringing light to communities needing hope and solutions. Send your comments to CLTV.com slash GML. I'm Gerard McClendon. Hey, stay positive, keep your head up, and always be encouraged. The McLennan Report, Axe or Ask, Donda's Rules, Suit Shoes, all available at mclendonreport.com.